All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to set up Python support in Emacs. So to do that, let's first start Emacs. And here, um, during this tutorial, keep your eye on this little white box in the upper left to see what uh, keyboard um, shortcuts I'm using. So taking a look at here, um, to get Python support in Emacs, I have to install Emacs patch packages called LPI and Conda. To do that, we first need to put the following in our .emacs file, which contains user-specific commands to run on Emacs startup. Um, and so uh, what is that? So here we, have, um, here we have some Emacs Lisp code that tells Emacs to download packages from the MLPA repository. So the default, um, the, default repository, the, the default repository for Emacs packages doesn't have these LPI conda packages that we're going to need. So we're going to have to tell it to download it from this other repository here. So how to do that? Well, first, let's copy this code chunk. After that, let's go to Emacs and let's open up our .emacs file. So to do that here, I'm going to type control X, control F to find file, control A to go to the uh, beginning of the mini buffer, control K to kill the string in the mini buffer. Then I'm going to type sla uh, tilde slash dot Emacs to open up my dot Emacs file where I have these user specific configurations. Then I'm going to go down to the end of the file using shift alt uh, greater than. And um, after that, we can paste or in Emacs terminology yank using control Y. Okay, that uh, yanks this text that I got from the minima buffer a minute ago. So you can do Alt Y to get whatever was there before it, which I guess was nothing. So let's do Control uh, Control Shift underscore to get rid of that. That's an undo. And here, let's do that copy again. Let's see. There's our yank with a control Y. And um, uh, here's what we're going to do. We can, since we have this in uh, this uh, Emacs buffer, we can either restart the Emacs and all of this code will be run the next time we restart, or we could just edit it, execute it interactively right now. So to do that, I can do control X, Control E to um, execute that line of require package. And see, we acknowledge that by printing package in the mini buffer down here. Here, then I'm going to do again, shift alt greater than, go to the end of the buffer. Here, going to the end of this um, Emacs list statement, Control X, Control E to execute that. So that adds this melpa uh, to the package archives uh, list variable. And so that means then when we invoke our package manager, it's going to also look for downloading packages in this melpa repository now. So after putting this in the .emacs, you need to restart Emacs. Well, we just executed it interactively, so we don't need to restart. Then run mx package list packages. So mx means hold down the option alt key and type x. So um, what does that mean? So let's do alt x. Here it shows the mx on the mini buffer down here. And then I can type l, uh, sorry, I can type p a pack tab to complete package l for list packages. And then I can type enter. And what that's going to do is it's going to start connecting to here um, these repositories. And here it's going to ask me if I want to connect to the melpa.org repository. And here I'm going to continue connecting A always, permanently accepting that melpa certificate. Okay. 
So it says there was some error retrieving lpi.gnu.org, but that doesn't matter because anyway, we want to go to the Melpa repository. And so we have that here. So here, let's go take a look at this packages buffer. Whoops. It says continue connecting always. Let's try that again. And let's see what this looks like. So here, this is a list of all the packages we can download for our Emacs. And the two that we want to download are, um, like it says on the tutorial here, Elpa and Con Elpi and Conda. So let's mark those for in installation. Here, I'm going to search through those the packages using Control S. And then I'm going to type Conda. Here, we don't want Anaconda mode. But, so I'm going to type Control S to go down to the next instance of Conda. Control S, Control S. Control S, and here we found Conda. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type enter to get rid of our I search. And then I'm going to type I to mark this package for installation. You see this I is showing up here next to Conda. Let's look for our other package now. Control S, E, L, P, Y. This is the other package that we wanted to install. I'm going to type enter to get rid of the search functionality, then type I to mark LPI for installation, and then X to say that we want to now install those two packages that we marked for installation. So it says in the mini buffer down here, packages to install to LPI and Conda. Proceed Y or N. So I'm going to type Y. It's going to download those packages now. OK. Now, so uh, what are we going to need to do? Next thing is we need to put this next chunk of code in our emacs.emacs .emacs file. And so this lpi enable is going to turn on the lpi um, Python IDE instead of emacs. And this S set queue is going to set the conda um, directory to where we have a mini conda installed. And so let's. Uh, Let's just verify that. So here, um, I'm just going to go inside of my Windows Explorer, look for Anaconda. Here, get an Anaconda prompt, prompt like this. We can type Conda and list to see where our Conda environments are. And so here, we can see that we indeed have this uh, CS570 S22 environment installed under my home directory backslash mini Conda 3. So here, we just want to make sure that this directory here, miniconda3, is going to be the same as wherever you have yours installed. So if you have a different directory here where your conda inviter environment is, you're going to need to put that different directory over here. So um, let's copy that and let's put that inside of r.emacs. Here, I'm going to do control x. Okay, to kill the packages buffer. And now we see in our .emacs that there, there is some code that has been added. This custom set variables has packages, selected packages, conda and lpi. So this is what the, um, the Emacs package manager does. It's adding this code um, after we uh, mark those packages for installation. And so after that, uh, we can, Again, control Y to yank these two uh, lines of code. Here, I'm going to do, again, control X, control E to do LPI enable, and then control E to get to the end of the line here, control X, control E to uh, execute this, con, uh, the, to set these conda um, variables so that Emacs knows where to look for our conda, um, our conda environments. So if this worked, we should be able to um, take a look at um, a new Python file, say test demo.py. And so since we have lpi enabled now, we should see this lpi minor mode. And 
what happens now if we type some Python code, say import, um, let's see. It says LPI is creating RPC virtual env. Uh, automatically install the RPC dependencies from PyPy needed for completion, auto formatting, and documentation. Yes, you should do this. So what is that doing? That's just going to install a couple of packages under your home directory so that you can get some completion inside of Emacs. So here I'm going to type import numby, and then I'm going to do control enter to send that to the Python interpreter. And you can see that I have a Python interpreter that opens up in that window and it says, um, this Python interpreter is an Anaconda environment, but the environment has not been activated. Libraries may fail to load. And indeed, we see that import numpy, no module named numpy, um, uh, module not found error. So instead, what we're going to do here, I'm going to do control X O to get to the other uh, window here, control X K to kill this Python buffer. Yes, to kill it indeed. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, but after activating the content environment. So here we do Alt X to uh, get the mini buffer prompt, then type conda and activate. Choose a conda environment, and here you should be able to complete from those environments under that directory that you specified. And here I have going, I'm going to activate my CS570 S22 environment where indeed NumPy is already installed. Then I'm going to again try the control enter. And we can see that the import numpy works just fine this time. Control X O to go back to the other window. And then we can do whatever numpy commands that we want. So here we have a numpy array. Here, control PP to go back up there, control K to um, kill that line, control X O to go back to the other window. Control N to go down and control Y to yank. So then we can edit Python code in one uh, Python script and execute that in uh, by, by typing control enter to see what the results look like on the Python command line. So that's gonna be all for this tutorial. Thanks and I'll see you next time.